Are you tired of dealing with rough, scaly skin patches or worried about their potential to turn into something more nasty? Well, in today's video, I'll reveal everything you need to know about actinic or solar keratosis and how it's connected to skin cancer. And we'll also cover the top treatment options to help you regain control of your skin's health. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Finbar, a family doctor now specializing in dermatology. On this channel, I help you to learn to love the skin you're in and enhance your skin health health for longevity. When I worked in Australia, the common name for these precancerous growths was solar keratosis. And I like that name because it's pretty clear that solar means related to the sun. But in most of the rest of the world, they're called actinic keratosis. In Latin, this means ray, as in rays of the sun. Keratosis refers to a condition in which there's an abnormal increase in the amount of keratin protein. And in this context, solar keratosis specifically refers to a skin condition causing rough, scaly patches or bumps resulting from sun damage. So if they're due to sun damage, then it's no surprise that they're mainly found on sun-exposed sites such as the face, ears, scalp, neck, forearms and hands. Solar keratosis in the most early stages starts off like a roughness to the skin, almost sandpapery feel in certain areas. As they develop further, they can have scaly patches or bumps. They can also be discolored and ranging from pink to brown or even red and almost cornflake like stuck on areas in the skin. And these features tend to appear gradually and are typically slow growing. Now, it's important to treat actinic keratosis because along with a similar condition called bones, they are precancers, which means if left untreated, they can progress to a type of skin cancer called SCC or squamous cell carcinoma. As actinic keratosis develops gradually, it's a crucial that you consult an appropriately trained healthcare professional if you notice any skin lesion, particularly if it's growing fast or if they're tender or painful to touch or are bleeding or even forming a scab, as these may be signs of a skin cancer. And so early detection and treatment can prevent actinic keratosis from progressing into skin cancer. Factors that increase the risk of developing actinic keratosis include a cumulative buildup of sun exposure and damage to skin cells. Many of my patients with actinic keratosis are outdoor workers and these include farmers, bricklayers and gardeners. Actinic keratosis is more common in people over 40 years old, but that's because we've had more time to be exposed to the UV light than younger people. Now, I'm seeing younger athletes, runners, cyclists and walkers developing the early signs of actinic keratosis. People like me with lighter skin types, light hair, blue eyes, are at most risk. And then people who live in sunny climates or at high altitudes have a higher chance of developing actinic keratosis. But even here in Ireland, with a lot of cloud cover and not much heat, many people get actinic keratosis as 80% of the sun's UV rays get through the clouds. So it's not necessarily heat that causes the damage, but exposure to light over a long period of time. And this reminds me of a famous quote by the physician Parcellus, it's the dose that makes the poison. And then finally, a weakened immune system also leads to increased risk of an actinic keratosis. And this can be from illness or also medications. Thankfully, there are quite a few treatment options available for actinic keratosis, and the choice depends on factors like the size of the lesion, the location, and the number of le lesions that a person would have, as well as the patient's overall health and preferences. Common treatment options include, well, in the very early stages where the skin's just a little rough and sandpapery, a moisturizer can help with the feel of your skin, but it's not really gonna treat the underlying skin damage. So this is where we would need to use a more aggressive type of treatment. Cryotherapy uses a freezing cold gas to freeze and destroy individual lesions. It's not great for multiple lesions as it can lead to a lot of trauma. When a larger area is involved, topical creams or gels containing active ingredients like 5-fluorouracil found in Effudex, Amiquimod, which is also known as Aldara, or more recently, Turbonibulin, uh, trademark Clyceri, can be applied directly to the affected skin to destroy the solar keratosis cells. Now, these are prescription treatments and your healthcare professional will advise you on which one will suit you 
when and how long to use it for. Effudex and Aldara are typically used from two to six weeks, whereas the newer treatment Clyceri is shorter at only five days. But all these treatments will cause a potentially nasty inflammatory response as they are killing off the areas of sun damage in your skin. I often like to think of it like applying weed killer to a lawn, you may not see all the weeds within the grass until after the weed killer has been laid down and then once it has done its job it will make the lawn look very black and damaged and similarly you may not see all the areas of sun damage until you apply these treatments as it will attack the sun damage deeper in the skin cells and it'll make your skin look much worse before the healing process begins and the new non sun damaged skin grows back. I hope you're enjoying this content. If you are, please consider hitting that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Other treatments include photodynamic therapy or PDT. A light sensitizing agent is applied to the skin followed by exposure to a specific wavelength of light to destroy the abnormal cells. Now this needs to be done in a specialist clinic or a hospital setting. It works very well, but the main downside is that it can be very painful. A variation on this theme is to use daylight to activate the light sensitive agent. Now, now it's less painful but requires outdoor space away from the rain which can be a challenge here at times in Ireland. Chemical peels are another option and they can be used by applying a strong acid solution to the affected skin to remove the top layers allowing new or healthy skin to grow and you would need to seek out appropriately trained professional for that. Curatage and electrosurgery can be useful for stubborn individual lesions. Local anaesthetic numbs the skin and the lesion is scraped off and an electric tip is used to destroy any remaining abnormal cells. Preventing actinic keratosis is primarily about minimizing sun exposure and protecting your skin from UV radiation. Here are some tips to reduce your risk. Wearing a broad spectrum sunscreen with five UVA stars and an SPF of 30 or higher, even on cloudy days. Seeking shade during the peak sun hours from 10 to 4 p.m. when the UV index is at its highest. Wearing protective clothing such as wide brimmed hats, long sleeve shirts and sunglasses. Avoiding tanning beds and sun lamps at all costs. As I have many risk factors for developing actinic keratosis, as an athlete I spend a lot of time outdoors running and cycling and hill walking and so on. Now I'm in my late 40s as I make this video and I have very light skin, light hair and blue eyes. And I spent a couple of years living in Australia. And even though I've used sunscreen over the years, I remember getting many sunburns when I was a child. Although I don't have any of those cornflakey like scaly patches yet, I'm highly likely to develop them in the future. I'm proactive with my health and longevity planning. I exercise regularly, I'm careful with my nutrition, I prioritize high quality sleep, and I work on my emotional health, and I also take care of my skin. So I've decided to be more proactive this year and later on, following the summer months, I plan to use either Effudex or Clyceri to lift out any non-visible areas of sun damage. Now, I'll be sure to document that journey and I'll post a video on it afterward. If you enjoyed this video, you'll also like this one where I discuss solar lentigo or age spots and how to get rid of them.